Hello everybody, welcome back. Right, today, in today's video guys, basically is this time of the year, is the time that I normally do my garlic, you know? So what, I'm got, what I've come here today to do is to tidy up where I'm going to be putting it. Now, like I said guys, normally I try to not rotate too much because I haven't got many spaces, you know? So this is the bed that tends to be ready at this time of the year because, you know, the tomatoes is in this bed and they tend to kind of die out, you know, come this time and this is the bed that's free, right? So, um... What I'm going to be doing today is basically take out all the tomatoes because I haven't actually been here since I did the last video, guys. I've just been a little bit busy. So what I'm going to do is all the tomatoes that's on here, I'm going to be harvesting them. I'm going to take out the, the old tomato plants, guys. I'm going to fix up the bed, basically, you know, re the bed. I'm going to be putting on some fresh compost. Um, I may not do it today, but, you know, that's the, the concept. You know, I'm going to clean out the bed, put on some fresh compost, and then I'll be, you know, putting my garlic in there guys you know what i'm saying to you so yeah so i just wanted to bring you along show you you know how things are getting along how things are looking and yeah we still have um plenty of tomatoes guys you know plenty of tomatoes to be harvested so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get on with that guys so it's just basically you know um, i'm gonna come along and just pull off any of the tomatoes that i see is you know is usable you know the rest may end up going into the compost Just rest them. I shall come back and collect them with a bag. Uh, this guy here was very low to the ground. Still see all the dirt on him. But yeah, also, like I said, guys, we have to work with nature. And you can see the slugs and snails have come along and, you know, done their thing. You know, when you grow organically, guys, you don't mind basically losing a few, you know, to, you know, the natural, you know, way of things, guys, basically, you know, the slugs and the snails. You know, they'll come along, you know, you know, have their share. You know, the best way, obviously, to, to avoid these guys is to just keep the place as tidy as possible. As you will see, you know, I haven't been here, I haven't been weeding and anything like that. So you can see there's a lot of, you know, stuff growing up. But, you know, today is the day I'll be tidying it up and make sure there's nothing there. Now, we've been lucky in a way. It has been cold, but it hasn't been cold enough, you know, to kind of damage the tomatoes. Because normally, if it's like you get a frost or something, on the top of it will kind of get a burn. You know, like a frost burn. And then to me, the tomato is, you know, is no good anymore, guys. But yeah, you know, we've lost, you know, we've lost a few to, to the bugs and stuff like that, guys. You know, but like I said, I don't mind. You know, there's enough that, you know, we can share and everybody's happy. The slugs, you know, I just leave it on the ground, guys. It will decompose and, you know, fertilize the soil for next year, I suppose. But yeah, I'll be moving them as I'm tidy, you know. Drop them in the compost. Yeah. yeah. Which one was it? Was it this one? Yeah. So I just come along. I try to do one side first, guys, and then I'll jump onto the other side. Do the other side. And this is like, oh, this is the example of what I wanted to show you. When it gets too cold. You know, your tomatoes will get something like this. To me, it's a bit burnt. You can see this side is fine, but this side here has been damaged. Tomato is no longer good. So um, I've been a bit lucky, you know, that um, it didn't get too cold and I'm still able to retrieve the majority of them. All right, so I've just kind of just started off on the other side here. It's picking off all the ones that's ready. Now, these guys here, what I do is when I cook, I just, um, I just basically... Cut, uh, cut this part off and I'll just put it down upside down, let it steam and then eventually it will just basically dissolve into like into the sauce and then it's just very easy for me just to go around you know pulling out the skin guys you know if you've got the patient that's part of cooking and on a very on a important note as well these are like I don't know for me like 10 times sweeter than what you'd buy in the shop you know so that's the beauty of, you know, growing stuff organically, guys. As you can see, I've hardly pruned them because, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't really see the need in pruning and, you know, taking side branches because, you know, I just see them as potential, you know, fruit, you know. If, if our weather was a little bit, you know, warmer, maybe, you know, longer throughout the year, maybe these would have, you know, would stay you know, a little bit more greener and, you know, allow me to harvest maybe more. 
but unfortunately, hair gets cold. There's another one rotting away. That will go on the compost, guys. Yeah, the green ones, I'll be, you know, the, from the big ones, I'll be taking them, you know, resting them down. Hopefully, they will, they will turn. They'll start to blanch, blanch and then, you know, turn red, hopefully. Yeah, as for these guys, I grow them every year, but, you know, these are the sunny delights. They, they, they're basically, once these guys start turning any kind of color, you take them off and allow them to just, you know, do their thing. If you allow it to fully ripen on the tree, you guarantee you're going to lose the fruit. Because what will happen is once it gets water, it will start to split. You know, that's what happens to all of them. But it's a very nice, sweet, kind of like a cross between a cherry and a you know, mini tomato. Well, I don't know if you'd call them cherries because they, they don't grow big. I'll start resting some over here now. Yeah, guys, you know, organic tomatoes. Bring them home, give them a wash, get the dirt off of them. You know, allow them to dry. And then, yeah, depending how, um, how ripe they are, you'll be able to have them for a few days. If not, you know, you can store them in the fridge. You can make your own, you know, store, your own store tomatoes. You know what I mean? You just store them. Or as they would say, you can can them. And you'll be able to use them at a, at a later date, guys. So we're just coming along, just getting the rest of the tomatoes. Yeah, so like, like I was saying, if I leave these here for when the frost comes, I will lose all of them. So it's no point growing them and not actually, you know, harvesting your fruit, so to speak. Take this guy out as a little bunch, but they fell off. Like I say, with the sunny days, I'm not even really going to bother too much with them. These ones look look nice. Uh, it just makes it easier if I just rest them here, guys, and afterwards I can come back and put them in a bag. I don't have a basket, so to speak. But like I always say, guys, I like to work with nature. It's from the ground they came. So if they rest off the ground for on the beds for two minutes, the beds are to totally organic. So I don't have anything to worry about. Alright guys, so I believe that was the the last of the tomatoes. So the next step would just be now to pull out the sticks. Pull out the sticks and then start. But first I'll get the bag, put these tomatoes in. So I'll just concentrate on this bed today, guys, as this is what we're working on. Now the trees kind of like started to yellow out a bit early on into, into the, uh, you know, the ripening. So I don't believe they got as big as they could have, you know. So, yeah, I mean, this was the bed I grew the garlic in last year. Like I said, I did have some trouble with it. Um, someone did say in the comment, maybe I should test the soil. Um, but to me, I mean, like the whole, this is only a small little patch. Um, if this bed is good and that bed opposite it is good and that's the one in the middle, I mean, I mean, what's the chance of it being totally opposite to either one of them? That's growing really well. So I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe the soil just needed, you know, amending. Maybe a little bit more, I don't want to say I'm um, a garlic food, but maybe a little bit more of, you know, the soil maybe lacking some sort of nutrient, you know, because like I said, the, the tomatoes also started to go yellow as well. So this year, when, this year, as I'm fixing it, I will try to amend as much as I can 
put some organic, you know, organic amendments in the actual soil, feed the soil, and hopefully we'll get a better result next year, guys. But to me, this is the bed next to it and everything seems to be growing well, apart from, like I said, the cold that's come along and killed my cucumbers. guys so in the end as you can see we've ended up you know you could say it's a bag of tomatoes it's halfway through halfway down the bag but you don't really want to put too much in on top of each other because they'll get squashed but it's only in here temporarily just for just you know just for the ride home so to speak All right so i'll just rest this on the side for now and the next step i'm going to be doing here guys is just pulling out remember the sticks that i put in these will be able to use again you know, so when you cut your trees and stuff, if you need, you know, twigs and things to hold them up, use the branches of your trees, guys, you know? That's what, that's what I do anyway. So I just rest them where they came from. Yeah, guys, you know what I mean? Like, organic, I don't know. what. Like, my, my version of organic, guys, is... My version of organic is, if you take the leaves, the grass, put it in a bucket, allow it to decompose, you then give that back to your soil. That's, that's how I see organic, you know, what is organic. Um... In different concepts, you can use different things that people say is organic, you know? Like you can use the fish, you can use the blood, you can use the bone. You know, like I use it sometimes, yes. But I think it's a thin line, you know, when it comes to the organic thing. Because, yes, animals may die in the forest and, yes, the plants may benefit from it. But the plant will only benefit from it where the actual animal dies, right? Not the whole forest. Not unless... Animals die at the same time all over the place and allow the soil to take it up. So I just believe, you know, in the forest method of things. Like how the trees get big in the forest and not, nothing take care of them. It's just the leaves, their own leaves that just drop in the ground, decomposes. The worms come along, do their thing. And they seem to be quite happy. So that's why I try to kind of keep gardening, you know, simple. You don't, you don't need to make the plant do things it doesn't need to do. It will do it, it will do it automatically, you know. All right, so just pulling out the sticks for now, guys. Any tomatoes that's there, that's fell down, they'll go in the compost. And then, you know, feed the life, the energy that it took from the ground. At least you can give some of it back. Try to get the tomato plants out of the ground, but you know, try not to disturb it too much, just to leave as much of the roots 
in the ground as possible, guys. The ground, I mean, sorry, the roots will stay in there, decompose, and again, it's another source of, you know, natural plant food. They will decompose, and when they do that, you know, that's what you will get from it. Hmm. I thought this was grass, but it seems to be garlic. But I don't know, guys. What do you think about regrowing garlic like this? Because I've never had luck with it every time I've tried. You know? But as this is the garlic bed, I'll try to go, you know, try to go past them and maybe I can retransplant them somewhere. And, you know, still try the experiment and see if they will grow. Right, that's just to keep them alive, you know? Okay. Yeah, guys, just gonna be de-weeding along the way. Right, so as you can see, guys, I'm just tidying it up, pulling out the weeds. Alternatively, you know, you will kind of disturb the top layer a bit as you pull out some of the roots. I don't have anything to cut. Normally, I will try to cut it down as low as I can, you know. But today, there's going to have to be a pool, and then just try to leave as much of the roots as I can. All right, so the concept, guys, will be, you know, take out all the tomato bed, take out all the tomato plants, sorry, guys. Get the bed looking as clean as possible. Then I'll come along put some compost that I've been composting there in the actual bin from last you know, from the beginning of the, the summer. So hopefully, you know, it should be compost enough. If not, it will break down in the ground. Today, it's kind of like showers on and off. So, trying to work in between it, guys. Pulling out as much of the stuff out. These are the amaranth plants. No, they're guaranteed to come back next year. And another thing again, with just leaving the tomatoes in here, or even dropping it in the compost, sometimes, you know, you get the volunteers coming up, you know? And as you know, guys, we don't pull up the volunteers unless we need the space. Still tomatoes on here, guys, but they're green. You know, we can use the green ones as well. If, you know, we know how to. But I prefer them when they're red. Or ripe, should I say. Yes, guys, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. It's all part of the gardening game. Try to go underneath to get as much of the roots of the dandelion. If you only get a little bit of it, it may grow back. But it's just to break the roots from, you know, a distant down. Yeah, guys, so like I was saying, you know, just keep the gardening simple. Try not to, you know, make it too hard, harder than it needs to be. You know? And on that note as well, so next year, like I said, I may not put the wood chips down, but, you know, my pathways right now is well, you know, should I say composted or decom decomposed wood chip. So I may end up, you know, just scraping the top layer of it and then, you know, add it, you know, back to the bed or depending how, de you know, if it's not too decomposed, I may just put it in a compost bin and allow it to finish doing its thing in there. But for the moment, the wood chip can be, or can get level to my bed. And then when it rains, as you can see, this little area here is kind of like, you know, a bit low. And it's kind of like sloping in a way. So a lot of the water kind of rises here if we've got a heavy rainfall. And the bed, um, the, the wood chip tends to go into my beds, guys. Right, so just let me carry on. <clears throat> just emptying at the bed. And I just wanted to give you a quick concept. Like I said, I may not put the... um compost on it in this video but if not the next time when you see it 
when I come to put the garlic, you'll see the bed will be, you know, fully ready and amended with the compost. Yeah, it's a nice, nice flower, no? I believe you can, if you're a florist, you could, you know, use them to decorate. They, they would stay quite stable on there even after they dry. You've got to give it a real hard shake for them to drop or it takes a while for them to start breaking apart. So another thing I have to come as well and come and do is come here with the shovel and the fork and give this compost a bit of a mix just to kind of you know mix it around. Looks like the rain is about to fall as well. Like I said, today is a bit of showers, you know, it's like a bit of April weather in a way. It comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. But it has been kind of raining for the past few days. You know, it's been very humid. But to be honest with you, this time of year, you don't really want rain. Especially it's kind of like harvest season. A lot of plants, you know, are probably be being ready right now. And now is not the time for them to be, you know, rotting in or getting mildew and stuff like that on them at this time of the year. The rain don't help with that. As you can see, there's like garlic that maybe I, I forgot last year. I didn't pull them up. They're coming up. So maybe I'll do an experiment with these guys and, you know, find an area where I can see if they will grow and turn to garlic. Because like I said, what I have tried in the past, they, I haven't had a successful result with them. But yeah, let's see. You can see guys this is basically the bed here and then you got this much more of kind of like wood chip or well, maybe i'll just scrape these guys away and um put them with the compost as i'm composting because the idea is if there's too much wood in there still decomposing it may you know rub the beds of the nitrogen so yeah but somehow somewhere i need to take you know like a layer of it away if i'm going to put more back next year or just leave it as it is for a year. So right guys, I believe, you know, you kind of, you know, got the concept of what I'm trying to do with the bed. So I'm just basically tidying it up and um, I will come back to put um, a layer of compost on it, guys, you know. But, you know, I'm thinking, you know, the video is kind of going on for a bit long, guys, and it's just, you know, it's literally what I'm doing. So next time when you see the bed, by then I would uh, hopefully put the compost on here and then I will be doing um, the garlic sewing, guys, you know. So let's let's hope to see you for that video, guys, and you know, um, you know, talk talk garlic basically, yeah. So on that note, I'd like to say, let's live well, and together we grow. <laughs>